I'm Ryan Hansen. I'm the president of Bon Voyage Travel here in Southern Arizona. And we're thrilled that you're on with us today. This is our webinar series that we've been doing now for about two months. Uh, every Wednesday afternoon at three o'clock, we bring on some wonderful partners of ours to try to give you an opportunity to be inspired while you're quarantined, while you're at home, while we're not able to fully travel and really want you to dream big. Uh, and tonight, today's topic is about as big as it gets in regards to bucket list and dream places to go. And so hopefully this is the perfect time. And, and while you, you are thinking to yourself maybe, well, we can't go anywhere right now. Why would we be planning it? This is the type of trip that you plan far into the future. You don't decide to go to the polar regions. Uh, let's go this weekend to the polar region. This is something you want to plan in advance for. Uh, so many of you may not have participated in one of these Zoom webinars. So I'd like to just go through real quickly our rules of engagement uh, for the Zoom webinar. We can't see you. If there's any concern there that, oh my gosh, I didn't do my hair today. I hope they don't see me. You're in luck. Not a problem. You can only see us. Uh, so you can see the presentation. You can see myself and our, our two colleagues here. Uh, but as the presentation goes on, this is meant to be an engaging presentation. It's not just something that you're going to sit back and listen to only. If you have a question, something that comes up in one of the slides and you say, I want to know more, you're going to see at the bottom of your screen here two buttons. You'll see a Q&A. You'll also see a chat button. You can click on either one of those, type in your question, and we'll either respond in real time to your and provide you the answer, or we're going to leave some time at the end of our presentation for me to come back in and I will ask Beth and Roger the questions that come up or maybe some of our frequently asked questions that a lot of our consumers and clients ask for these types of trips. So let's get going. I know you've been staring at this beautiful picture and there will be plenty more of them, but we are so excited to have our partners in Cork Expeditions who, who quite frankly are one of the best partners and especially in this area, they know these regions like none other because this is is what they do. A lot of companies, a lot of cruise lines will go to the polar regions. They'll have an Antarctica sailing that might just be a sail by. You just get to look at Antarctica and they only go a couple times a year. This is what Quark does. So don't you want to go with somebody that this is the essence of who they are? Well, this is why we've brought Roger and Beth, our two esteemed colleagues, to be able to give you much more detail and understanding of how you too can visit the polar regions. I'm going to turn it over to you guys. So thanks for joining us. Beth and Roger, take it away. All right. Thank you so much, Ryan. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to a wonderful webinar about the polar regions. We are incredibly excited to be chatting with you. And exactly what Ryan had just said, this is a perfect time to dream. This is a perfect time to plan in the future. This is not the type of trip that you book on a given weekend. It definitely takes a lot of time to plan out such a beautiful wanderlust type of travel. So we're gonna walk you through all of the different logistics of going to the polar regions, a little bit about the history of of Cork Expeditions. So we're really excited to be chatting with you today. I'll uh, introduce myself. My name is Beth Mercier. I'm the Regional Sales Director for North America with Cork Expeditions. I've been to the polar region six times. I've been down to Antarctica four times and up to the Arctic twice. My most recent trip to Antarctica was this past January. Uh, I was right before the travel advisories got pretty strict and so I'm very lucky. I'm really excited that I got the opportunity because I got to do one of our fly cruise programs in Antarctica, which I'll share with you in just a little bit. I'm also really excited to be joined by my co-host today, Roger Arden. Roger has recently joined Cork Expeditions, but has an incredible range of experience in both big ocean and river cruising. So we're extremely excited to have him on the Cork Expeditions team. So Roger, welcome. Hi Beth, thanks so much for, uh, for the warm introduction. Um, as you can see, my name is Roger. Oh, I got my new Quark uh, little thing on here. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a rookie to the uh, polar uh, se sector of travel. I'm super excited to be here tonight and thank you Ryan and Catherine for, for bringing us uh, on board. Um, I've got over 20 years experience in the travel industry with both big ships and river crews and now expeditions. 
I'm thrilled to join our Quark Expeditions, and I really think I hit the career lottery. 10 years in ocean, 10 years in river, and let's see what happens next. Um, I can mark the seventh continent off my, um, off my bucket list. So basically next is the moon. So I'm real excited to be here. Um, I'm here to talk to you about, uh, about Quark Expedition and what I've learned over the last couple months with the company. Um, founded in 1991, we're the, travel, we're the leaders in polar adventures. Unlike other cruise companies that offer multiple destinations around the globe, Quark only focuses on the polar regions. Kind of like KFC, remember that commercial work with chicken, that's all we do? Well, polar expeditions, that's all we do. You know, I really love this picture. Imagine you've crossed the Drake Passage, reached the Ar Ar Antarctic Peninsula, and you see the skyscraper site, these skyscraper site, skies, glaciers. Um, having never been there before, but having experienced, um, having never been to Antarctica before, but having experienced uh, Africa, I really think about it when the first time I saw that first elephant, just that excitement that I felt in my heart and knowing that I can go back to that experience and flash back to that and really think about that and how exciting it was. I can only imagine that that experience when I first crossed the Drake Passage and see my, my, the first time I see the, the Antarctic Peninsula. Um, as true polar experts, we've been pioneering small ship expedition voyages to the Arctic in our, our Antarctica for nearly three decades. You can choose from one of our six purpose-built ice class vessels to sail with an experienced team of expedition specialists, naturalists, and guides. Our entire fleet of ships have capacities of less than 200 passengers. They range from authentic icebreakers to comfortable and premium to high end and luxury. Why smaller vessels? It's simple. Smaller ships mean we can take you to more remote areas than larger ships can. Um, as true polar experts, um, here we go. Uh, not all landing sites are the same. Polar, re uh, polar regions are available to all cruise ships. Because our ships are less than 200 guests, we're able to cross, we're able to uh, access over 100 landing sites, unlike the larger ships whose options are much more limited. Because of, because of our size, we're able to take you to remote tiny villages, settlements, and even sail through narrow fjords and channels. This ability to get off the beaten path and avoid overcrowded shore landings means you have much more time in authentic polar and have a more authentic polar experience. Guests have also had more opportunities for engagement. On board our vessel, channeling on, on board our vessel, you can really channel your interior, your, your inside. Um, you can really get to know the staff on board each and every night. Imagine dining with one of our expedition staff each and every night because we only have, um, or our guest to staff ratio is seven to one. Lastly, smaller ships translate into more, uh, uh, translate to a smaller environmental impact, which clearly is so important in keeping this delicate destination intact for generations to come. Each of our itinerary introduces you to unforgettable encounters with wildlife, like coming face to face with half a million penguins. We've all seen these amazing pictures, um, witnessing elephant seals bathe in the sun, or catching a glimpse of your first polar bear in Spitsbergen. Keep in mind, this is an expedition. Not two itineraries are identical. Each and every day is different and determined by the number of factors, including ice conditions, wildlife viewing, or perhaps for photography opportunities. Yes, we know the landing sites, but we visit them, but the timing could be a little bit differently, different. Certain, certainly changes in order to customize your, your, your client's experience or your, your guest experience. Here's a shot of some up close and personal whale watching. My colleague Beth has also her own footage, which she'll show you a little bit later on in the presentation. Um, here's a shot of our guests. Um, here's a pair of Gintu penguins. The largest population of Gintus are found on the Antarctic Peninsula out, uh, in subarctic islands. Um, uh, with a total breeding population of approximately 387 pairs, the Gentu penguins are the largest abundance of penguins found in the subarctic and Arctic uh, islands. At Quark, we offer a wide range of activities such as kayaking, hiking, show snooing, uh, snowshoeing, overnight camping, and stand-up paddleboarding. Beth, did you get a chance to do stand-up paddleboarding? <laughs> I've so far have not done the stand-up paddleboarding in Antarctica, but I have done this activity here, the daytime paddling kayaking option. Uh -huh. uh, I had never done kayaking in the polar regions until I tried it on one of these. They're inflatable sit-on-top kayaks, and I found it to be incredible incredibly easy. It was a beautiful day just like you see in this picture and it was one of the most fun experiences I've ever had. Awesome. It's certainly I want to try that. It's certainly something I want to try. Well now let's get to the why. 
why travel with us? What makes us the experts? What makes us the leader in Polar Adventures? Um, what it is, is we've been taking guests to these life-changing exclusive experiences for longer than anybody else. In fact, almost 30 years. When selecting a polar company, you want to choose an expert who knows the region intimately, who has impeccable safety record, and has the right equipment. Some of the first include, back in 1991, Quark was the first expedition company to take travelers to the North Pole. Also the first company to lead and fully circumnavigate the entire continent of, of Antarctica. I'm sure we're all familiar with the 2005 Disney film, March of the Penguins. Well, in 1992, Quark Expeditions led a team of first, was the first team to, uh, to lead a, a non-scientific visit to visit the Emperor, Emperor, Emperor Prison, uh, sorry, Emperor Penguin rookies, rookeries, it's hard to say that. Imagine experiencing the North Pole from a balloon. We're the first company to offer ballooning at 90 degrees north. Our staff and expedition teams speak a variety of languages and are from diverse backgrounds. Every member of the field team undergoes an in-depth training through Quark Academy. The curriculum is taught by our seasoned instructors at the Quark Academy Center in Ushuaia, Argentina. It includes a full range of hard skills like emergency preparedness to soft skills like the importance of being, a culturally, being culturally aware and storytelling. Our expedition staff members are also polar experts with expertise in polar history, wildlife conservation, and glaciology. Photography, option, photography options are over the top when it comes to, uh, or have an over the top level in Quark, on board of Quark expeditions. In fact, every departure features one or two photography experts. On the left-hand side of your screen, is Acacia Johnson, who sails with us frequently. Acacia is a National Geographic magazine photographer and has been featured by Time Magazine, who recognized her as, the number, as one of the number one top influential female photographers. At Quark, we're proud to say we offer the most favorable passenger to guide ratio, which is so important. In fact, we have for every seven passengers, there's one polar expert. It's great, so you can dine with them every night. Sustainability is super important at Quark Expeditions and part of our DNA. In the spring of 2019, we unveiled our enhanced sustainability strategy under the banner Polar Promise. Our goals were to number one, shrink overall, our overall footprint and build resilience. Number two, to measure, report and reduce carbon emissions. Number three, partner with waste, partner and develop waste uh, solutions in communities and ports that we operate. In line with our sustainability focus, we formed our Polar Ambassador Program. Guests who become Polar Ambassadors on Quark Expeditions take home this, uh, this sustainability lessons they learned on board the ship and are able to apply them to everyday life. It's wonderful. Uh, just to give you some examples of st sustainability achievements, in 2017, we fully got rid of all single-use plastics, super important to the earth, eliminating 327, uh, sorry, 320,000 single-use plastic bottles. Another important focus was emissions, which we've decreased by a whopping 28% since 2010. So sustainability is certainly important to Quark and it's something that we really focus on quite a bit. Um, let's talk about who, who sails on board. The typical Quark, Quark expedition guests. Through 30 years of research, we've determined that there are four types of travelers that sail with Quarks. And some common traits, um, amongst all of them. We first of all got our checklisters. That's kind of me, I want to check off that uh, seventh continent. They want to check off the seventh continent. They enjoy sightseeing, cultural activities, appreciate private com uh, and uh, comfortable accommodation, and visiting the North Pole is definitely on their bucket list. Next we have our learners, driven by quality experiences with experts and like-minded people. They value the connection they feel with nature in the polar regions typically not motivated that much by adrenaline. Next, we have our escapists. They wanna get away from it all, unplug, relax, get pampered, and then reconnect with themselves. Appreciate comfortable accommodations and great food. Um, last is our adventurers. Could be a bit younger, could be still working, uh, more apt to rough it a little bit, looking to come home with plenty of adrenaline pumping stories to tell their friends. Um, now let's kick it over to Beth. She's going to go through, through some of our exciting itineraries um, in both the Arctic and Antarctic. Beth? Wonderful. Thank you, Roger. 
Uh, so yes, I, I personally uh, connect with the escapist category. I really like to be out with nothing but mother nature surrounding me, taking in that incredible fresh air. So um, I'm going to walk you through all of the differences of the itineraries. So we're going to start with the Arctic up in the northern hemisphere. Uh, the Arctic encompasses so many different areas under the Arctic Circle. So I wanted to give you this particular route map of all the particular places that in the last 30 years we have narrowed down to really focusing on the best of the Arctic. And those particular destinations nations include Iceland and Greenland, Arctic Canada, we will go up to the beautiful Svalbard Archipelago, which for any of you who are unfamiliar with Svalbard, that is part of the country of Norway, and it sits just south of the North Pole. Speaking of the North Pole, back in 1991, our founding trip, we were the very first company to bring travelers up to the geographic North Pole, 90 degrees north, the top of the world, an itinerary that we still operate today. And recently, we have introduced the Russian Arctic as well. So I'll walk you through just a couple of my favorite places in the Arctic, and we'll start with Spitsbergen, also known as Svalbard. Now the entire seasonality of the Arctic season is in our summer time. If we weren't living in a particular time frame as we currently are, we would be up in the Arctic right now. Uh, but during about June through September is the time frame that we will visit the Arctic. And Spitsbergen is one of my favorite places of the Arctic. We typically go in June and July. It is known as the realm of the polar bear simply because this is such a wonderful place to see those beautiful polar bears. But there is also a wide range of wildlife that you can see in this beautiful destination. Uh, if there is wildlife on land, we typically approach very safely. So if there's a polar bear, instead of going on land, we're actually going to go into the Zodiac boats to navigate around the different area. However, if there's not predators, like you see the caribou, the puffins, the walruses who really mind their own business, then we can go right up close to them, taking pictures and exploring. So for anyone who does love wildlife, if you've been to the Galapagos Islands or even African Safari, like Roger mentioned, Spitsbergen is a really great place to visit. The other wonderful place I wanted to share with you that is in the Arctic is Greenland. And I don't think Greenland gets a lot of attention. I think Iceland gets all the popular attention, but really Greenland is the place to be. There is beautiful fjord systems, towering mountains. There's a UNESCO World Heritage Site in Ilulisat Ice Fjord. So imagine just sailing through and seeing nothing but icebergs surrounding you. Really, the scenery in Greenland, I can only describe as if you're combining Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones and New Zealand, <laughs> mythical fantasy and real elements all combined. That's what really gave me the emphasis in Greenland when I got the opportunity to go. So typically, we will visit Greenland in July, August, and September. There is some particular differentiation. July and August really give you a lot of the incredible wildlife viewing, the activities, hiking, kayaking. You get to visit local Greenlandic communities. So there's a, a wonderful social element involved in this polar itinerary. But if you happen to time it well in September, like I did on this particular trip, you have the opportunity to do all of the things that I mentioned with beautiful scenery, great wildlife viewing, but then you also get to see the northern lights at nighttime. So this was some of the footage that I got on my uh, trip to Greenland. So I really highly recommend it as a beautiful place on our planet that everyone should have on their list. Okay, now from the Northern Hemisphere, I want to bring you down to the Southern Hemisphere of Antarctica. This is a really special place for a lot of people. 
I grew up, uh, my father was a commercial airline pilot, so I felt as though I had done quite a lot of traveling uh, from a very young age, very lucky, but it was only until I stepped on foot of the continent of Antarctica and got this incredible out-of-body experience did I really understand how magical this destination can be. So to give you some of the geography and the logistics of getting to Antarctica, our fifth largest continent, 98% of the continent is covered in ice and there is a natural pack ice that will surround the continent each year. It will naturally form around the continent and starting in October and the beginning of November that will actually recede exposing the Antarctic Peninsula which you see on the right hand side of your screen. That is the physical part of the continent where you can actually step foot on it. So the whole part of the experience in Antarctica is stepping on the continent as well as visiting some of the sub-Antarctic islands that surround the continent. So generally when we visit Antarctica, there are two main access points. If you're sailing down to the continent, you're going to fly down to Ushuaia, Argentina to physically get on board the ship and set sail. Alternately, one of the itineraries that I recently did is instead of sailing down to the continent, you have the opportunity to fly down. <laughs> and why would someone want to fly down? Well, one of the most frequently asked questions that we get is in the regards to the Drake Passage, the dreaded Drake. Uh, it could be the Drake Shake, very turbulent, or the Drake Lake, very nice and calm. It's really up to Mother Nature. It only takes about 36 hours to sail from Ushuaia to the continent. And for about 24 of those hours, yes, I won't lie to you, it can be a little rough. I always recommend to take precautionary seasickness medication, relax, maybe avoid the alcoholic beverage because after those 24 hours have concluded, you are in calm, protected waters throughout the entirety of your itinerary. Many people like to wear it as a badge of honor of, I got through the Drake Passage. But even after I set all of those expectations, I'm sure there's some of you in the audience that would prefer to skip the Drake Passage. So we have a fly cruise option that enables you to fly from Punta Arenas, Chile down to the continent to hop on board the ship and set sail. So there's lots of varieties of our itineraries. As we are the leader in polar adventures, we have the most variations of Antarctica itineraries to choose from, starting from the shortest of eight days all the way to 23. And why Antarctica? Why not Antarctica? It is such a beautiful, incredible place. For many people, it is their seventh continent. This is one of those unique destinations that if you love travel, if you love to see the world, if you love wildlife, you have to go to Antarctica. It is an incredible place that is actually a lot more reachable than one would think. There are no towns, there's no cities, there's no populations. It is nothing but ice, glaciers, snow, wildlife. So it's very pristine and it's really great for anyone that's seeking that incredible travel experience. The seasonality in Antarctica goes from November through the beginning of April, known as the Austral Summer. There are some differences of the seasonality, so feel free to chat with one of your Bon Voyage travel advisors if you want to know if you want to see a particular type of whale or penguins during a time of year. No matter what, though, you're going to have an incredible time regardless of the time of the season that you visit. You can see icebergs of all different sizes, vast remote landscapes. We get to visit old whaling stations, research stations. There's a lot of history, exploration history in Antarctica. So we, and of course, encompass that into our itineraries. Then of course, there's the wildlife. And that's one of my favorite things. Uh, this was a particular photo taken. Um, I have to share. Uh, actually, Roger, will you go back to the one just before with the point yeah. and shoot camera? So this was one angle on my trip. This was a uh, guess in a Zodiac boat. 
And they have, as you can see, a, an array of camera equipment. I wouldn't call it the most updated, <laughs> but we get everything from professional photographers to using an iPhone and everything in between. But from another angle, and if you go forward, that's me. <laughs> so a wonderful guest on board one of the Zodiacs actually caught a picture of this incredible whale feeding. And that's me in the orange uh, wetsuit in the kayak. And I'm so thankful that this experience was captured because uh, this is how close you can get to the wildlife. They're very curious. This beautiful female uh, humpback whale was actually just feeding on a buffet of krill, just no cares in the world. And we got a front row view. So this is just a, a small example of the type of experiences that you get in Antarctica. As we are looking ahead, and now is a perfect time to dream and plan, we're looking at the 21-22 season. So that would go from November 2021 through March of 2022. And while we have a wide range of itineraries to choose from, we wanted to just showcase a couple of our special departures for that season. We are doing a celebrating uh, a wonderful uh, trip called Ernest Shackleton Celebration. It is going to be uh, commemorating 100 years since his death. He is actually buried on the town of Grit Viken on South Georgia Island. So if you have any history buffs, this actually follows the footsteps and is a really exciting itinerary with special guest speakers. And I'm not sure if you know, there is going to be a total solar eclipse in Antarctica during this time in November, and it's actually December 4th, 2021. So we have two solar eclipse itineraries that we will be operating starting at the end of November of 2021. So again, there's lots of different types of itineraries to choose from, from eight days all the way to 23 days, but these happen to be a couple of my favorite ones. Uh, okay, I think what we can do now is talk a little bit about the ships. There's such a nice range of ships to choose from. So Roger, why don't you walk us through some of those? Um, nearly three decades, Polar Exped Cork has been doing polar expeditions, but we've got a, a wide range of vessels that I want to talk about today. Um, th the ships were built to the highest classification. We've got the, uh, right here, what's our first ship? Oops, here we go. Um, as our first ship is the World Explorer. Launched just last year, the World Explorer is one of your options when you can sail to uh, Arctic uh, 2020 um, and it's designed for the polar travel in mind. Um, all suites, all balconies, every suite has either a private walkout or French balcony for direct ocean views. The World Explorer also delivers plenty of public space too, from our glass dome observation lounge to the Explorer lounge and the library. We've also got a, de a dedicated lecture theater for presentations. Health and wellness facilities are also featured on board and include an outdoor track, a small gym, and sauna, plus a spa, spa and changing room, and shower spring lockers. Uh, Beth, do you have, have you anything to say about the Explorer? Have you been on board? So this ship is so brand new. I haven't had the opportunity to oh. sail on her. Um, I have to say, however, in my experience, uh, this might be the way I like to travel. Um, it really just combines the best of everything. You get the experience, you get the adventure, but then you get some nice creature comforts while on board. So she's a beautiful new ship. This is a picture of one of her cabins. Um, and we're we're really excited to welcome her to the fleet. Yep. Uh, next is the Ocean Adventurer. She sails both the Arctic and Antarctic. She's recently come out of a multi-million dollar renovation. Because of our, her size, she's small, um, she's a true guest favorite, carrying a mere 132 passengers. Uh, makes her small, intimate, and nimble. Um, the Ocean Adventurer offers both standard as well as premium cabins. Beth, isn't this the ship you just got back from? It is, yeah. So I had a great experience on the Ocean Adventure. She is our smallest ship. And just to reiterate what you said, Roger, all of our ships are less than 200 passengers. And so I think it's an important thing to note 
we are very well aware it's not a particularly good time to be cruising at this moment. But once we get through this challenge and we all start to feel confident and comfortable to cruise again, small ships is definitely where it's going to be. Absolutely. It just provides the opportunity to ensure health and safety and have a wonderful experience. And so I really enjoyed the Ocean Adventurer. She has gone through a multi-million dollar refurbishment. So while she's not the all sweet, all balcony luxury feel. She's very comfortable with really great cabins and that small ship atmosphere. So it enables her to go even further into destinations through fjord systems around glaciers than other ships simply can't get to. Perfect. Um, next up is Ocean Diamond. She's one of the fastest ships in Antarctica. The Ocean Diamond is modern, She's a super stable, uh, sorry, stable super yacht accommodating 189 guests built to cross the Drake Passage. So like her sisters, activities include zodiac cruising, snowshoeing and hiking, as well as optional, as well as optional kayaking. So all of our ships feature most like most of the, uh, the, the different things that I talked about with the zodiac cruising, snowshoeing and hiking and optional kayaking. Beth, have you sailed on the Ocean Diamond before? I haven't sailed on the Ocean Diamond, uh, but I've, I've been on board her. And one of the particular things, uh, she was docked in Ushuaia one day and I said, I gotta see this ship uh, on the inside. So I asked mm -hmm. to come aboard and did a tour. And one of the things I love particularly about the Ocean Diamond is she has so many different types of cabins. She has dedicated single cabins because a third of all of our guests are single travelers. So if you don't prefer to share a cabin or if you don't want a hefty single supplement like other cruise lines charge, a dedicated single cabin is a great way to go. She also has double occupancy cabins, suites, and balcony suites. So there's just a nice wide range of cabin accommodations to choose from. And the fact that she is very stable but fast means you get right through that sure. Drake Passage as quickly as possible. For sure. Excellent. And we're super excited to announce the Ultramarine. Um, she's gonna be launching next spring, spring 2021, um, arriving just in time for next year's Arctic season. She's purpose built. She'll carry a maximum of 199 passengers. Again, Beth mentioned that about being less than 200 is optimal for, for the Arctic and on, on Arctic. Um, she's designed specially for the polar region. That means that she's not designed for the, the Caribbean or the, uh, or going through the Panama Canal. So everything on board of her on board her is designed for the polar region, which is quite unique. Um, she'll offer a best in class seven day operational range. So she'll be able to get to some really cool remote destinations um, that the other ships can't get to. Um, Beth and I had the pleasure just a couple weeks ago watching what's called her float out. Basically this happened uh, where she's built in, um, in Croatia where they, they've, they've finish the hull, the ships, they floated into the, the ocean, and they're gonna be finishing her off. But we're so, so excited to, to see her coming um, in just a few, actually uh, next year. So she offers 11 different cabins types, a beautiful modern spa with fitness facility, both indoor and al fresco dining options. And a really cool feature that I'm super excited about is a twin, or sorry, two twin engine helicopters. The Ultramarine will also offers, uh, well, uh, sorry, offers broadcast portfolio uh, adventure activities. Well, sorry, will have the most broad, the most adventure uh, activities in the whole industry, and she'll so showcase a, a variety of sustainable features that will far exceed any of the industry standards. Um, she's built. Here's some pictures here where you see of her interiors. Um, here's a fun fact as well: at three, 13,500 gross tons, she offers the largest the largest uh, size of introductory uh, size cabins in the industry. So that means if you want an introductory cabin on board the, uh, the Ultramarine, um, you'll have, the, she's the largest, the largest size cabins in the industry. We're very much looking forward to her delivery next spring. Um, Beth, I'm gonna turn over to you to take us home. Great. Well, yes, I'm incredibly excited also about the Ultramarine. Um, the helicopters alone are the cool feature. Um, so there is an included helicopter ride for every guest on board. This is not only going to be able to access a destination like Antarctica, but now we can see it from an aerial perspective. So it's just going to change the way we travel um, for many years to come. 
Uh, so to, to conclude and before we get to your great questions, I did want to mention that we have a wonderful book and travel with confidence offer for you through our wonderful partner Bon Voyage Travel. We understand that these are difficult times and we want to make it easy for you to travel and to achieve your dream of visiting the polar regions. So right now we are offering a low deposit. We also have a lifetime travel credit guarantee, meaning if you put your deposit down and then decide, hey, I'm just not ready to travel yet, you can use that deposit for your lifetime. Uh, this is combinable. We have a wide range of offers, up to 30% off on select departures. And then every Bon Voyage travel guest will get $150 per person shipboard credit to use once you're on board. In addition to the offers that I just mentioned, I do also want to couple and say Cork Expeditions has always been leading the charge with health and safety. We've been writing the book in polar safety and this is simply our next chapter. We are going to be creating onboard protocols such as staggered embarkation, disembarkation. We're going through cleaning protocols wellness exams. So we're developing all of those procedures that will enable the confidence to travel with us when you feel comfortable. So with that, I'd love to see if we have any questions that we can answer. You bet. Great job, guys. Uh, I, thank you for, for shedding some great light on, on these regions. And I learned, even myself, I actually learned a couple of things I'd love to point out to our listeners. Uh, and one of the first things that maybe is lost on our, our people is because they don't live in the industry like we do. So when you say things, Beth, like seven guests per one guide, what, what that really means is if you think about it, if there's a 300 passenger ship and they say we have five guides to handle you, do the math on that. That's quite a bit more guests per yeah. every all right, so you guys do lead the industry in that. Am I missing anything else in regards to that? I mean, what it means is, is you can actually have a relationship in a true relationship with the guide, not just I went on an excursion and then I never saw him again. Maybe you can touch a little bit more on that rapport. Sure. We often, anyone who's either cruised before or if you're somehow involved in the cruise industry, we like to always hear the, we have a one-to-one -one ratio. So for every passenger, there's a staff member. Those are nice stats and all, but those mm -hmm. mostly refer to all the behind the scenes staff, our hospitality, our crew. So that's very much in par with what Cork Expeditions offers, but even more so, we say for every seven passengers, there's one field expert. There's actually a polar expert who their specialty is photography, history, marine biology, ornithology, glaciology. So each day you could be with a completely different different expert. And what this does is it provides such a well-rounded experience. If you're going to Antarctica or the Arctic for a particular reason, if you like birds, if you like whales, if you like glaciers, if you like photography, if there's so many people on board and so few guides, you might not get that personal experience with the particular expert. But at Cork Expeditions, you will definitely have that opportunity and it will be in a small group atmosphere. Excellent. You mentioned in the offer that there's shipboard credit, but I, I think there's another uh, listener that is curious. So as they pay their cruise fare, what's included in regards to do they have drinks included? Is all of the equipment included, the excursions? Because on you know a normal ocean cruise on just a regular premium type ship, all of those things cost more money. So mm -hmm. You kind of fill in the guests on what they can expect with their cruise fare, but then in addition to that, that shipboard credit, what would they be able to take advantage of with that shipboard credit? That's a really good question. So what is included in the cabin price is obviously going to be your shipboard accommodation and all your meals. We have non-alcoholic beverages and then with dinner, alcoholic beverages. We used to, I found this out recently mm -hmm. that we used to include the alcohol earlier, but found some people weren't too <laughs> keen on doing adventurous stuff afterwards. So that's why we included the alcohol at, at dinner. But if, if you would like a mimosa, you're welcome. It would just be at additional costs, which the shipboard credit would apply to. In terms of the activities, 
when each day in the polar regions, you're going to explore via the small zodiac boat like you see on your screen. You're going to go out to do all of the walks and hikes, the landings as we call them, uh, wildlife viewing. That's all included. That's part of the itinerary. There is a few select optional activities that can be booked in advance that are at an additional cost, such as overnight camping in Antarctica, kayaking, stand-up paddle boarding, uh, mountaineering. So there's a wide range that these are just enhancements to the overall experience. Uh, so once you get on board, you can also book those on board and apply your credit, uh, spa service, additional alcohol, gift shop items, some more exclusive gear. Um, I, speaking of gear, and I'll have to do a little show and tell, so excuse me one sec. Let me add Each of our real, guests. Let me add something real quick. Beth. Yeah. Just, just something super cool too is the the helicopter option on board the ultramarine is included. Mm -hmm. That will also be included, as is this parka. So as yeah. you see in all of the pictures, everyone's wearing their cork yellow parka. Uh, this is a wonderful multi-layer jacket that is included in the cabin price along with the rubber muck boots. So you're not going to need any footwear once you're off the ship. So all of that's packaged into the cabin price. Thank goodness the parka comes with the cabin <laughs> Those of us in Southern Arizona, I'm wearing a long sleeve. Like this is as thick as it gets. I just felt like I had to, with you're talking about polar regions, I had to put this on. None of us have jackets in, in Arizona. We have windbreakers, you know, that's about right. as, as much as we have. So that's a really nice added feature. Uh, Roger, as I was thinking and looking at the solar eclipse itinerary, that sounds like an amazing itinerary, but it seems so far off. Uh, I don't want to sound salesy here, but December 4th of 2021 in a, in a Quark Expeditions booking type situation, shouldn't people start thinking and booking that now, like waiting? They may miss out on there's a- only, There's only one eclipse, Ryan. <laughs> that's right. I mean, it's one eclipse. So it's, You've got a small ship, so they probably ought to jump on that. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's, I mean, as you hit the nail on the head, it's a small ship. Um, that's in high demand. There's people that wait for that, you know, every, every, is it 11 years? I think it is something like that, that we have the, the full solar eclipse and um, we're excited to have it again. So definitely it's not too early to, uh, and if you see um, the, the offer too is lifetime travel credit guarantee. So it's, it's kind of a, a book with confidence that rolls right into that. That's great. Hey Beth, as I'm, I'm watching these slides, uh, I, I have to ask myself, you've thrown out kayaking and these really adventurous opportunities for me. And I see this Zodiac in the picture right here and the landings. Can you walk me through if I have some mobility challenges, you know, how physically active do I have to be? I don't need to be a triathlete that can climb a rock mountain, do I, to go on uh, this type of a trip and really enjoy it? Not at all. And thank you for bringing that up. I, we love using the word cork expedition simply because expedition is what really describes the experience versus a cruise. The focus of the itinerary is about the experience, the destination. It's not your typical like cruise, but that should not limit anyone. You do not have to be a triathlete. The process of getting in and out of the Zodiac boat is very similar to getting in and out of a bathtub. So swinging your legs over. So if you mm -hmm. feel comfortable enough to swing your legs in and out, that's usually what's involved of getting in and out of the Zodiac boat. Our crew will teach you this nice safe grip. There'll be usually about two to three crew members helping you in and out of the Zodiacs, both from the ship as well as when you arrive the shoreline. Even more so once we arrive the shoreline, it's generally beautiful beaches, either rocky beaches or sandy beaches that you're walking walking on and we will put markers down in different directions so you'll see our expedition team members staggered around at that point it's up to you it's really at your own pace so you don't have to worry about keeping up with a group you can really explore at your own leisure if you want to sit by the shoreline taking pictures just taking it in deep breaths and enjoying the experience or if you want to go in further and get a good hike in it's all up to you uh, thank you. I mentioned this at the start, and I do want to kind of close with this as well. That is, 
when you when you think of Cork and what would be the reason to travel with you? You guys presented so many different reasons, I think. What I love was you can go from eight days up to 23 and everywhere in between. It's not just one itinerary or uh, one way to, to travel. You give the different options with Drake Passage, etc. Uh, when I think of really immersing myself, if I'm going to the polar regions, I don't want to miss out. I want that full authentic experience. And so I would challenge our listeners as you start looking at different ways to travel, why would you go with, with Cork? They really are the experts in this area. And the second piece is, as I mentioned it, so many cruise lines say, we have itineraries to Antarctica and I call them drive-bys, be careful. They actually don't get on a Zodiac and have a true landing on Antarctica. So you can say, I've seen Antarctica, but I didn't get to step off the ship. So you got to know the differences in this space. And I think, Beth, you and Roger hit so many great things. That's one of the things I want to end with is check out Quark. Understand all the value that you're getting. You may not be able to get back to Antarctica or the polar regions. This might be your one shot. So do it and immerse fully. And I want to thank Beth and Roger for your time today. You guys are great friends and great partners in the industry. We are so happy to work with you. We hope that our listeners today have, uh, have been able to start to put that dream to a reality now and that you were so inspired. And this offer is very consumer friendly, if you think about it that way. It's time to get that trip booked uh, to the polar regions for next year. So start thinking about that. Contact your Bon Voyage Travel Advisor, uh, and we would love to have you on a future webinar with us. Note, every Wednesday for the foreseeable future, Bon Voyage will have a new series. So get back on our website, bvtravel.com. We have a slate already set for the entire month of June. We're going to be looking at Star Clippers. We've got Alaska. We've got a lot of things planned into the future to help you dream big and hopefully convert those into a reality. Beth and Roger, on behalf of our two friends, we want to thank everybody that's joined us. Have a great evening and stay safe out there.